Hello everyone. Today we will be doing a sort of short, small revision about commonly asked instruments in in your examination. Myself, Dr. Gunjanta. I'm working as assistant professor in ophthalmology at MNJ Institute, BJ Medical College, Civil Hospital, Ahmedabad. I have no financial interest in any of the products shown here. This is just for educational purpose. So first of all, we'll start with the wire speculum. So this is a wire speculum and this is a universal wire speculum with guard. So use of wire speculum, it is both use of both is to keep leads apart during any type of cataract surgery. But this is used for small incision or extra capsular cataract surgery, telegium surgery, keratoplasty surgery, where, where because this gives less pressure on the globe, where we want more exposure because this can be separated very much apart like we when we want more exposure like in retinal detachment surgery in squint surgery in extraocular any extraocular surgery then we can use this universal speculum and then we'll move on to the scissors this is a corneus scleral section enlarging scissors this is used to cut the conjunctiva and incontinence capsule during extra capsular cataract surgery to cut the corneus scleral flap during as a section enlargement in extra capsular cataract surgery to cut the corneal button during penetrating keratoplasty and to cut the various ocular tissues like conjunctiva cornea and tenons capsule this is a vana scissor it is little bit of smaller in size as compared to this and the blades are also shorter vana scissor is mainly used in to cut the inner window and to cut the peripheral areas during trabeculectomy it is also used to cut the short ends of the suture this is a capsulotomy scissor it is used to cut the intercapsule when there is a calcification of the capsule it is also used to cut the vitreous prolapsed vitreous during any type of cataract surgery now moving on to the forceps this is a pilation forceps it is used to plug the tracheatic lashes from upper or lower lip in case of tracheasis or misdirected cilia this is a one tooth forceps here you can see at the edge of it there are there is a tooth so it is one by two one tooth forceps one tooth forceps is used to hold the conjunctiva and tenon capsule for stabilization of the globe to hold the corneal uh, section uh, while suturing the suturing the corneal keratoplasty sutures or extra capsular cataract surgery sutures and to hold the globe during any type of cataract surgery this is a macpherson this is a capsular rexus forceps and this is our macpherson forceps so these two you can commonly get misjudged or misguided so here you can see the macpherson forceps has a curved end and there is nothing at the end while in the capsular excess forceps there is a little bit of end at the curved end so this is how you can differentiate between capsular excess forceps and macpherson forceps use of capsular excess forceps is for performing the anterior capsular excess during cataract surgery while use of macpherson is to implant hold the intraocular lens poly pmma or foldable intraocular lens while implanting it into the anterior chamber to hold the or to tie the suture along with the tying forceps or straight forceps and to remove the cutted capsular ends during the cataract surgery so this is a straight tying forceps it is used to hold the fragile conjunctiva during any type of surgery and it is also used to tie the suture along with the macpherson forceps and it is used to hold the flap thin scleral flap during trabeculectomy another one this is a muscle holding forceps and this is used to hold the muscles extraocular muscles during retinal detachment surgery so these are our forceps now this is a superior rectus forceps Super rectus forceps is a bit stouter. It has a double edge, one curve here and another curve here, and it has a tooth, one by two tooth. So this is how it holds the super rectus, and is always used with Aruga's needle holder. So this is a thumb rest, and this is how you open the instrument, and this is how you close it. So super rectus forceps along with the needle holder, 
it is used to take the superior rectus bridal suture during to stabilize the globe during the cataract surgery now this one is optic nerve guard and this is enucleation scissor so as you can see enucleation scissor are quite stout and this is optic nerve guard so optic nerve guard it is used to during enucleation surgery to pull the globe upward and then beneath this optic nerve guard you just insert your enucleation scissor and you cut the optic nerve with enucleation scissors this is a tenotomy scissor so tenotomy scissor is bit smaller enucleation scissor is quite stout and larger the tenotomy scissor is used to separate the tenon's capsule during squint surgery during retinal detachment surgery and at times it is used to cut the cilia also this is our artery forceps it is also when it is a small it is called as a mosquito artery forceps whenever you are holding any type of these type of instrument you should be holding it with thumb and the third finger this finger should stabilize here and your first finger should stabilize like so this so this is how you hold any type of instrument so it is easy to open and close same way this is how you hold your scissor like this so this will stabilize your instrument then again moving forward this is our castro visual caliper so it has a marking over here and small so the castro visual castro visual caliper is used to measure the corneal diameter during the and congenital glaucoma to measure the corneal diameter to measure the papillary diameter whenever we are doing pars plana vitrectomy we want to measure the distance from limbus it can be used to measure this also it can be used to measure the levator palpebrae superioris during the tosis surgery now again we move to disposable blades so this is a non disposable type of keratom when this is our disposable keratom so keratom you can see it is a diamond shape so it is a diamond shape the front end is sharp and has a diamond type of shape the keratom is used for making an incision during phaco emulsification and during anterior chamber entry in small incision cataract surgery then this is your crescent knife as you can see crescent knife is crescent in shape it has a sharp edges but the tip is curved so the dif to differentiate it from keratom see the difference of both keratom is blue this one is keratom and this one is crescent so here the tip is sharp here the tip is blunt edges of both are sharp the use of crescent is to make the sclerocorneal tunnel during small incision cataract surgery it can also be used to make the outer scleral flap during trabeculectomy surgery now moving next is a 15 degree side port so this 15 degree side port is used to create extra incision during the any type of extra capsular cataract surgery and during trabeculectomy also and whenever we want an extra uh, extra entry into the anterior chamber this 15 degree side port is used so it has a straight end and this a sharp end the same purpose can also be formed by mvr blade this is also called as a mvr blade it can also be used as a side port incision and it can also be used to make the vitrectomy port during vitrectomy so now the another disposable thing is a cystitome so cystitome here can you see the tip so one is so it has one angle over here and another angle over here and it is made from 26 gauge needle so it is used to cut the anterior capsule Uh, when whenever we want to do anterior curvilinear capsular rotaxis or capsulotomy this is used to cut the anterior capsule the same instrument what you we made is lacrimal syringing cannula so the tip of it is blunt and it has only one end this is used for doing lacrimal sac syringing it can also be made with 26 gauge needle so i think you should not get confused with both this you can see the difference very well here It has a 
double curve and it has a single curve in a blunt end so this is a now a lacrimal probe and this is a nectar sheep punctal dilator lacrimal probe has various sizes it is written here these are various sizes and lacrimal probe probe is used to cannulate the nasal lacrimal duct and it is it also opens the soft stop or soft pass uh, soft stop in nasal lacrimal duct in pediatric patients this nettle shape punctum dilator it is used to cannulate or open the lacrimal punctum in before dcr or dct for as a diagnostic procedure now this is a dialer dialer is used to manipulate nucleus into the anterior chamber or bring the nucleus into the anterior chamber uh, in small incision cataract surgery it can also be used to manipulate nucleus inside the bag during fecal emulsification surgery it can also be used this hook can also be used to rotate the pmma lenses or any type of lenses so this one is a simple dialer and this is a t dialer so the t dialer has it has a t shaped at the edge of it and it is used for rotating the intraocular lens now this is a wire vectis so this is how the t dialer this is a wire vectis wire vectis is used to remove the nucleus from anterior chamber during small incision cataract surgery and sometimes when it will not possible in extra capsular cataract surgery to remove the nucleus in intra capsular cataract surgery when we want to remove the whole nucleus or a part of the nucleus this wire vectis is used i think now it is visible the t dialer is now visible it has a small curved atten now this is a bart parker knife holder it is a stout instrument and it is this various blades like 15 number blade or 11 number blades can be fitted onto it this is our iris repositor so it has it is both sides and it has an one angle and it is flat at the angle so there is nothing like curved at, at the tip of this instrument so the iris repositor is used to reposit the iris during whenever there is iris prolapse during any type of cataract surgery or any type of intraocular surgery this is a needle holder barakwa needle holder it is used to hold a needle and to for the suturing in any type of cataract surgery terigem surgery squint surgery retinal detachment surgery whenever we want to take sutures it can be used this is syncos two way irrigation aspiration cannula so here is a it has a two port one the straight goes for as straight is for aspirating and here a curved here comes the irrigation so irrigation iv we apply iv set at this end so from here comes the irrigation and this we apply a 5 cc syringe or 10 cc 5 cc syringe over here and then we can aspirate from this end so this is how we aspirate and this is for irrigation purpose this is our hydro dissection cannula this is our hydro dissection cannula hydro dissection cannula is used for hydro dissection as well as hydro delineation hydro dissection is separation of the cortex from the capsule and hydro delineation is separation of the nucleus from the cortical material so it is used for hydro dissection hydro delineation it can also be used for uh, stromal hydration at the end of surgery this is now we again we'll move to retractors this is a catch for retractor it is used during dcr and dct surgeries to retract the lacrimal sac
this is a desmeres lead retractor desmeres lead retractor is used in cases of blepharospasm or in pediatric patients it is used to keep the leads apart and whenever we want to examine so in pediatric patients if it is not cooperative in patients with severe lead edema or ecchymosis we can use to examine the anterior segment this is a lens hook and this is a muscle hook so you can see the difference lens hook has a straight end muscle hook has a knob so lens hook is used for extra capsular cataract surgery it is a lens expressor so we apply pressure at a 6 o'clock gently and then we apply counter pressure at a 12 o'clock and this is how we express the nucleus during extra capsular cataract surgery and previously it was also used in intra capsular cataract surgery this muscle hook is used for screen surgery to isolate and uh, hold the muscle and it is also used as in the retinal detachment surgery to hold the muscle now this is a ptosis clamp so it has a spring action it is used for ptosis surgery and this is ectropion or entropion clamp this is used for ectropion and entropion surgery this plate goes on the globe side or rather the ocular ocular side and this open end remains on the lead side so and this should remain on the temporal side so if there is one there are two one is used for right upper and left lower and another is used for left upper and right lower line and this rest on the globe and this remains on the outer side so you can be asked about whether this belongs to which eye or not this is all for today's revision if any case in any query you can write in the comment box will reply as soon as possible wish you very all the best for your exams thank you